So what you hunting? It's crazy evil. of New Grandwell has been the epicenter of mysterious disappearances, deaths, and shadowy cover-ups. Freshly outed from the force, a lone detective sets out to unravel the mystery behind this sordid affair. And immediately fucking dies. Yeah, like you do any better. Thankfully for us, Coltic's influences from blood run true from the very first moments of gameplay. Crawling out of a mass grave and laying your hands on a trusty agricultural tool, you use your second chance at life to take on legions of bloodthirsty cultists and eldritch abominations in a crunchy, lo-fi homage to Monolith's classic horror FPS, Blood. Developed by Jason Smith, aka JSOS Games, and published by 3D Realms, Cultic's been one of those games long in the anticipation, and while all we have to play at the moment is the demo, it's safe to say that everything well, almost everything on display is extremely encouraging. The positives are immediately clear to any fan of retro first-person shooters. The combat is smooth, skillful, and capable of surprising depth once you get a good grip on the mechanics at your disposal. Your arsenal is straightforward and without redundancies. The Luger pistol and Sten SMG provide mid-range firepower at various levels of trigger happiness. At long range, the Mare's Leg Lever Action Rifle offers precision and exceedingly juicy headshots in equal measure. The close quarters, the obligatory sawn off shotgun, well, it's a great way to paint the walls really, really quickly. I mean, if you don't mind the shade being hint of brain. You'll need this hardware since Cultic isn't shy about being every bit as brutal as its spiritual predecessor, even without the use of head scanners. Yes, I know for some that's borderline heresy, removing one of the reasons why old school shooters were so legendarily punishing in the first place, but bear with me. From the low-tier hatchet-slinging enemies through to sten-wielding marksmen and red-robed cultists who alternate between hurling dynamite at range or blasting you with shotguns up close, every attack is not only clearly telegraphed, but each shot is used to clearly ID where the attack is coming from. The days of walking into a room and losing half your health to some well-hidden enemy are, and very much should be, over. The demo, which in of itself is a solid introduction to the gameplay and aesthetics of Cultic, can be played in a variety of different difficulties, from casual all the way up to extreme. Having played the demo twice, once on hard and then on very hard, I can confirm that the game is not fucking kidding when it makes that distinction. Hard should be a solid challenge for those familiar with retro shooters, leaning more into the action horror side of things where you'll be generally flush with ammo and supplies, giving you plenty of choices in how you'll tackle each confrontation. Very hard, on the other hand, feels like being kicked down a flight of stairs. Enemies not only show up in greater numbers, but their nastier variants show up earlier and they all come at you with a renewed level of aggression and precision. Throw in the fact that you'll be frequently starving for ammo and health pickups, and Cultic manages to effortlessly shift into a survival horror experience without losing that brutally violent charm in the process. Unfortunately, as much as I'd love to just gush over Cultic, there's something here that does need to be addressed. Shit's fucking brown. I absolutely understand that this is a stylistic choice on the developer's part, to give everything a kind of grungy, almost grindhouse kind of aesthetic, where colours swim together in this murky haze of greys and browns, punctuated by the occasional dash of green or blue from trees or water. But it's a chore to actually play through. I, I get what's being attempted, but from a pure gameplay stance, it's not a great idea to colour code your enemies then put a filter over the game which reduces those colours to slightly different shades of mud. In fact, the filter is entirely optional. You can hop onto the options and change it at any time. On the Steam forums, it's already clear that there's a vocal part of the player base who would much rather the filter was something you could choose early on or simply not have on by default, but I want to quickly go to bat in Cultic's defence. There are some areas where the colour filter is an outright hindrance to the player, yes. Any time you're outside, where you'd expect to at least have some level of clear illumination, the swampy browns look entirely out of place, as if you're being forced to squint through a greasy CRT display. In the tunnels you later explore, however, 
it actually works perfectly. The low light and oppressive atmosphere totally justify the artificial blurring of colours, making details vanish into the murk and affording the cultists a chance to hide in the shadows before springing their ambush. Coming from someone who gets really fucking nerdy about film production, there's a reason why some films that use colour consciously tend to have a bigger impact than those that just bombard you with one visual style the entire time. Mandy, The Colour Out of Space, The Green Knight, just to name a few, understood that creating a balance between realism and stylization achieves a more pronounced effect than purely one or the other. If the filter was used dynamically for specific locations, then I feel like it'd sell the shift in tone better than just slapping it on 100% of the time or turning it off entirely. Speaking of tone, a big highlight of the demo at least is the sound and scoring. The weapons are satisfyingly punchy, the cultists spout some wonderfully garbled curses as they clap eyes on you, and the music... well... This track's called Unstoppable for a reason. As you venture deeper into the mines in the latter half of the demo, this track kicks in to highlight that you've gone from simply surviving the cultist onslaught to actively bringing the fight to them, cutting through their ranks with your full arsenal and spreading their entrails all over the fucking shop. It's the kind of gear change track that the level needs to push the player onward, and it's very reassuring to see that Cultic already has a firm grip on this from the get-go. Beyond aesthetics, any gripes? get less objective and a little more personal. The wind-up mechanic used for melee combat and throwing certain weapons is in itself absolutely solid and very easy to grasp. The standard hatchets you can collect from some enemies can be swung at full force or thrown a short distance for a quick and silent headshot, but the same can't be said for the dynamite. Uh, okay, maybe it's just me. The fact that enough thought was put into how it works as a weapon that you can not only lay down unlit bundles and shoot them later, but also split a bundle of sticks and turn them into a cluster bomb, shows that the concept has been well developed. It's just that they're a bitch to throw with any level of accuracy or effectiveness. In Blood, Dynamite detonated on impact with the enemy. In Cultic, unless I've been ridiculously unlucky or unskillful, not only does Dynamite not do this, but the player's throwing arm either gently lobs the bundle a few feet away or yeets it clear into the next time zone. Uh, you know what, fuck it, I think I just need to suck less at the game. Ultimately, Cultic is an absolute blast. The demo is a wonderful showcase of what it excels at, and whatever negative things I or anyone else has to say about it so far, they aren't about anything that can't be tweaked or corrected before release. For fans of Blood, or retro shooters in general, I can absolutely recommend that you try the demo out for yourself. As always, links for the game and the developer will be below. Thank you for listening, and have a good one.